oh my God, I must be old. <laughs> Actually, I used to be a good friend of Ed Greenspawn until uh, he just came down off the stage and he said to me, you know, I've always been a really big fan, Carol. I loved watching you on Canada AM when I was a little boy. <laughs> But welcome, everyone. This is a, <laughs> this is a really um, important evening. And welcome, of course, to the Public Policy Forum, because we love it when you come west. We love it when you come west to Vancouver for this awards dinner. So welcome to you. I'm sorry about the weather, but it is November. <laughs> I'm very um, happy always to do anything with public policy. It's one of my uh, weaknesses, I guess. Those of you who know me that know that really that's what drives all of the bits and pieces of the careers that I've had. And I think I like it so much because it's so challenging and it's really, really hard to get it right. Because there are lots of great ideas, you know, about all of the issues that we're thinking about. There are lots of academic papers that we can draw from. But until you can apply the lens of practicality but also political realities to it, then you have only a grand idea. And it's not public policy, it's useless policy. So the real trick is to try and take a great idea, find out how you can make it work. What are the secret ways that you can really find to implement a good idea and try to marry the two in a way that doesn't lose the initial energy and glory of the idea. So it is, um, it is magic when it happens. It's really difficult, and I really love it. And so tonight, this is uh, perfect for me to be able to introduce to you tonight's first honoree. Now, we talked a little bit about the Peter Lougheed Awards, and very appreciative that Joe is here tonight. But everybody knows, uh, and Ed has talked extensively about this, but Peter Lougheed really was a master of public policy. He also was, as we know, a great Canadian, as well as being a tremendous Premier of Alberta, a great family man and a friend to so many of us. So the fact that these awards are in his name is very special. And it's special for me to introduce the first honoree, uh, Tamara Vrooman. Tamara is, of course, as you know, CEO, president of Van City. Van City is Canada's largest community credit union. But personally, I have to say, I was blessed to have Tamara as my Deputy Minister of Finance. And any politician in the room knows how critical it is to have at your right hand somebody that is really intelligent, really thoughtful, energetic, uh, interested in public policy, determined to do the right thing, and I had that in Tamara. And her career, when you look at her full bio, I mean, it's full of all of these accomplishments and, and so many awards, but I thought the only way I could maybe bring it to life is just to tell you three little stories about Tamara. And the first one, she's already worried. <laughs> well, I could say, Tamara, that I could never get you to call me Carol. It was always minister, yes, minister, no minister. Minister. But the first one really was uh, the biggest challenge that we had during our time of working together, and that was labor negotiations, which those of you who are from British Columbia remember very well. We had 300,000 of our workers. So there was doctors, teachers, nurses, CUPE, everybody had contracts that all ended on the same day, midnight, March 31st. You can imagine the possibility for disruption if all of the folks decided either to walk out or go slow or do whatever and give us difficulties within our province. And we had the Olympics coming up. So our big challenge, which Tamara took the lead on, was to solve all these contract negotiations. And I have to tell you, without question, she lived she breathed, she slept with her Blackberry. <laughs> because on her Blackberry, every day for that year, Tamara would sign off on a contract, turn down a negotiation, add a policy idea for this table. I think at one point we had about 60 tables going. And 
Tamara did that throughout the year, kept everybody calm, everything quiet, and right up until the last half hour before the deadline, when we finally signed off on our last contract, I think it was 11.40 p.m. before midnight on March 31st. And so under her leadership, we managed to get through those amazing labor negotiations in a pretty tricky province uh, without any disruption, and everybody signed new contracts before their old contracts ended. So it was just masterful, and a tour de force of someone who loves public policy and knows how to get all the players working. And I can also remember one time when our surplus was coming in a little bit stronger than we had expected. And so I said to Tamara, you know, I'd really like to do something for low-income seniors. So Tamara goes away. One week later, she comes back, and she's got a piece of paper. Down this side are all the public policy ideas that we could possibly use to help low-income seniors. In the middle was a costing of all the public policy ideas. On this side was the effect, how many people would be involved and what the effect would be. We sat down, we went through, can't afford that one. That one doesn't really help enough people. To, we'll do this one. We'll bring back the supplement, the low-income supplement for seniors. And with that stroke of the pen, we helped so many seniors in this province. And But that's how the woman does business. She was so clear in her thinking about what public policy ideas we could actually accomplish. And for me, what it said was government does not have to be slow. It does not have to be bureaucratic. But you do have to have leaders. You have to have leaders like Tamara who can take it and run with it. And of course, she did that as she moved to Van City as well and has been such a leader in value-based banking. And, you know, it's, it's hard to believe. Who would have realized that a local financial institution has become a global leader in how you do value-based banking? Around the world, Tamara is asked to speak all over the world about this model of banking, how you can use financial instruments, how you can use banking models to do good, to help other people. And my last, and perhaps favorite story is Tamara was uh, on holiday with her family last year and they're having a great time and she checks her emails and you know it was one of those funny emails that came along we all get them right and you go oh, it's sort of got crests or colors or something Tamara says no way I'm opening that one she leaves it she comes back to work and her assistant said wasn't that a great email and Tamara goes back look through find the email opens the email a personal email from the Pope. <laughs> the Pope personally asked Tamara and 60 global leaders from around the world to come to the Vatican and have an informal discussion about how, again, financial instruments and banking and value-based banking can be used to help those in need all around the world. This is a woman of strength, of influence and power, and she is such a worthy honoree, my great friend, Tamara Fruman.